Good day, it's Arnold Klaassen here from LifeWise and today I want to talk to you about something that is misleading most people on earth and especially the believers themselves. And if you understand this principle that we're going to talk about today, it will help you an enormous lot to really solve the problems that's in your life. And I want to call it today problems versus symptoms. You see, when you are in ministry, especially when people come to you with their problems, they talk to you about their problem and their problem. And the most important thing about the problem is the following. That the problem as it manifests is never the problem. Yes, you've heard me correctly. That the problem as it manifests is never the problem. It is only the symptom of the problem. What's manifesting in people's lives as problems, they call it the problems, but it's actually in reality only the symptom of the real problem behind it. And so we, we do not discern it and then people come to you with the problem, say, of depression. And then we try to deal with the person in terms of beautiful things that we can do. That's not necessarily wrong, hear me clearly. But it is like you must start think positive, you must start think more this, you must focus this, you must all these things. Yes, and I'm not against about anything I'm saying. But the problem is that the problem of depression is not negative thinking. Yes, it is part of the problem, but it is not the problem. The problem is the, is the fact that people do not know their identity. That is the heart of depression. And you can fight the symptom and you can get the symptom under control and you can get sort of a big relief in your life but you will always come back to the fact that because the problem is not solved the, pro the symptoms will come back and then you will say to yourself yeah but I still got the same problem yes you've got the same problem you've only dealt with the symptoms and the symptoms is not the real problem so it's, it's very important that you need to discern in your life and in everything in your life in terms of what's manifesting, to be honest with what's manifesting, but to realize this is only the symptom. And in focusing on the symptom and dissecting the symptom and the problem, you never get to the solution. Because the, the, and to analyze the problem as it manifests will not bring you to the problem. It, it is it's a scary thing. And that's why we have such a high level of disappointment amongst believers, especially. Because they fight these things in their lives, these sins and these manifestations. But in the meantime, they fight the manifestation and I'm not fighting the problem. Because you cannot fight the problem. The problem, you cannot even solve the problem because only Jesus can solve the problem. Because the, the solution to the problem lies not in f even fighting it. It's, it's like finding out what God has done concerning the problem. God hasn't dealt with only a few things and He's restoring us, you know, out of the sin thing to make us look better and so. No, God has recreated us unto one new man. He gave us a new identity, brought us back to the original. Because we must understand that, that, that uh, it... it that the solution is only in the original purpose of God. The original purpose of God was that you and us must be, must be, must be sons of the God, must be a, the bride of the, of the bridegroom, must be family of the king. And all of this happens in the presence of the king. Because the king himself is the light of the world and only light can dispel darkness. Everything that you can define as, uh, as symptoms and problems in your life is all about darkness. Therefore you need to get in light into your life. It's not like only get a few drops of light into your life. Light is not only a quality, light is coming from the source of God Himself. You need to get into the presence of God Himself. Very important. There is no solution outside of the presence of God. But in the presence of God, His original purpose was for you, sonship, to be the bride, to be the family, in His presence. Therefore, you can fight the manifestations. You can fight all these things. You will never solve it. You will only discipline it. And you will never get to a solution. And I'm not against disciplines. I'm not against discipleship. I am absolutely for discipleship. But you cannot disciple the problem. 
You cannot disciple the manifestation. You can only disciple your, the management of you, of your soul, of your thinking, of your mind, of your time, of your eating patterns, of your sleeping patterns, of your study patterns of the word. You can only discipline yourself. You cannot discipline the problem. You cannot discipline the devil. You cannot discipline sin. You're not supposed to do it because that's the world where Jesus dealt with it completely. We just need to come into the presence of that solution, namely God Himself, and start to receive what He, what he has done. And He has not given us some packages. He has made us like Him. We were created like Him. We were brought back unto His image and like us, giving a new identity, brought us back to the original pattern. You see, uh, we, we were raised with two, two types of Gospels. We've already talked about it. The Gospel of sin and the Gospel of the Kingdom of God. Jesus said explicitly, I brought the gospel of the kingdom of God. People, the gospel of sin is telling us that sin is the problem. Sin is not the problem. It became a problem, yes. But Jesus solved the problem. And the, the, pro the real problem is not the presence of sin. It is the absence of God. The real problem is not the presence of darkness. It's the absence of light. Because light drives out darkness at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. We need not to, to fight the paradigm in the, in the field of the dimension of the existence of the paradigm. We, we only fight the, the, the problem by going to another paradigm, a higher paradigm. By the law of spirit and life that has changed and chased and, and, and uh, dissolved and the law of sin and death. We live in another law. We live in another dimension, another paradigm. That is the solution. We flee from the, from the paradigm of sin. We don't fight it. We don't even talk about it constantly and focus upon it because it's not the problem. It's a manifestation of the real, of the, of the, of the real problem and that is the absence of God. The definition of sin is you've missed the mark. And now we can talk about this, 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 this wrong mark that we've hit, you know. And you're living in this, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. And we can go uh, all about, about it, and it solves nothing. It brings us just bigger into condemnation. Because we must talk about the real mark, the original mark, the original purpose of God. It's only bringing people back to the original kingdom package that will solve the symptoms and the sin problem. That we so called call the real problem. No, this is only a sign of you not living in the fullness of the kingdom package. What is the kingdom package? That you are, that you were created in the image of God, you were recreated back as the one new man, that you were created for a kingdom, that you are the son of a king, that you've got a, a purpose to live in the relationship with the king, you've got authority, you've got keys, you've got talents, you've got this, you've got a dream, you've got a purpose on earth. People, this is what it is all about. And all your sins and your problems and your negative things that's manifesting is only a symptom of you not living the original purpose. That's all that it is. And you can fight it till you are wherever in life. You will never solve it. Because you can never conquer sin. You can never discipline sin. You don't need to focus on sin because sin is not the real problem. You see, in the sin gospel, people told us that sin is the problem. And man became guilty before God. But Jesus paid. Jesus changed. Jesus solved the sin problem totally. He has totally dissolved the whole existence of sin. Of, of the origin of sin, but yet we still live in it. Why? Because we don't believe it. We don't live in the light of the truth that dispels the darkness and we leave an open door in our ignorance and lie for the devil to come and manifest himself just again. Even though Jesus solved it, the devil can manifest himself again on earth by you believing the lies that's in your life. The lie that sin is the problem. Sin is not the problem. And, and the problem was solved by Jesus. Why are we so, so, so passionate about the problem? We need to be passionate about the solution. The solution is not to just fight the problem. The solution is never fighting the problem. The solution is to run to the solution. Christ is the solution. It's a relationship with Him. It, you, you see, you can be forgiven of all your sins. 
I'd still be lost. Because, because in, the, in the gospel of the kingdom, we say it's not about how sinful you are, it's how lost you are. Because when I talk to people, I don't start with how many sins you have, because if they realize how sinful they are, they want to be a redeemer so that Jesus can solve the sin problem. Now he solved it already. The problem is that although he solved the sin problem, you're still lost, my friend, because you're lost because you do not live in a relationship with the king. This is eternal life, John 17 verse 1, that you know God. You can be totally forgiven and totally righteous in a certain sense, even though you can reach that if you can say it like that. You can be totally like that and still be lost. Because Jesus came to solve all the negative things that hinder you from entering to God. But it's only in entering into God and having a relationship with God and knowing who you are that will totally solve the problem. You can be, you can be totally, you can be, if you, you can totally solve your sin problem in a certain, you cannot, but if you, say if you can totally solve your sin problem through disciplines, you're still lost. Because heaven is not about being a perfect person, heaven is about being perfect and in a relationship with God. And it's not about being forgiven in the first place. It's about, it's about ending up in our forgiveness to enter into a relationship with God, to live in His presence. The mark is to be in His presence. The mark is to be like Him. The mark is to let His life through, flow through us. The mark is not to fight anything in life. The mark that, that, that we've been missed with sin is not to... to, to to fight and to, to, to get to a new point. God has already given it to us. God has already purposed it. God has already produced it. We just need to discover it. The Christian life is a life to discover. It's not a life of fighting and whatever. And we, but in the gospel of sin, it's all about fight this and fight this and fight this. It's a never-ending fight against things. Because if you don't fight it, the wrath of God is upon you and you're guilty and you're this. And it's always degrading you for who you are. But, but that's not the problem. That is even not, that's even not the truth. Because Jesus solved the whole thing. You see, let's just think about, say, a thing like poverty. You know, here's a person living in poverty and, and, and uh, the sin conscience mind say, Oh, okay, if I can just get three million I'm out of my poverty. Now you win three million through the lottery and guess what? Three years later, you're back into poverty. Because the three million can last in provision for three years. But then you're back in poverty. Because the reason why you're in poverty is not because of the, the lack of money. It's because of a lack of education of a mindset. Poverty is a, is a product of a mindset that's sinking poverty, that's sinking negative, that's sinking uh, uh, all, the, all the problems. It's not a mindset of edu that's educated to, to think the right things. Poverty is the absence of the right education in your life. And you can give any, any poverty person any amount of money, you will still end up in poverty. Because money is only a means to an end. And it can help you for time being as, as much as the money, money, the money is. It can help you to, to give provision. But money must be produced. And it can only produce through an education. The right education of how to think and how to live. And how, how to have the right disciplines. And to master the field in your life. And, and, and focus and all these things. That is what solves po poverty. It's not giving people money. Giving people money has never ever solved poverty. Because the origin in poverty is not because there's no money. There's a lots of money in this world. The money is just not coming to that person in poverty. Because money feels unsafe with that person. Because that person is, is only blame shifting and it's only putting his, the reasons for his, for his problems upon other people and the government and the rich people and whatever. And money will never come to people that's got a mindset like that, that's irresponsible, that is not disciplined, that do not work, that don't want to work, that just find problems when they work. That person, it's a poverty mindset. So please understand that even though Jesus provided the money for redemption, if you can say it like that, people are still in poverty because it's not to have the provision of Jesus that brings you into, uh, in, uh, that solves the problem. It is, it is living in the presence of the solution himself. 
the solution is not a, a bit of a provision of a few packages of money and, and innocence or whatever. That's only, a, that's only an enablement to enter into the presence of the solution himself. We need to live in the presence of the solution. We need to live with the solution, God himself indwelling in us. And you must know what is the consequences and the implications of having the God of the universe in you. Because you can even be a Christian or a believer with God living in you and you still live in the problem and you still live with all the nonsense. Why? Because you don't know what is the light all about. You don't know what is the truth about your life. All our symptoms that's manifesting as sins in our lives is because of the absence of truth. Because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is not your fighting against anything. It is the revelation of the truth of who you are that will bring a solution in your experiencing the problem that is manifesting in a lot of symptoms but is never the problem because the problem is the absence of the truth. You need to know the truth. And the truth is not produced by you or your decision. The truth is produced by Jesus himself because he is the way, the life and the truth. The truth about your life in what you were created, in what you were brought back. And you need to come back to that truth in your life and throw away the gospel, the sin gospel, with all its lies and all its wrong definitions and all its wrong focus and all its, its, its um, total concerns comes to be consumed about sin and how big sin, how big sin. Listen, sin is big and devastating, but that solves nothing. And in just focusing upon sin and not focusing upon the work of Jesus Christ that enables us to enter into the presence, it's about, it's about uh, 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 you know, degrading God Himself. Why are we so impressed with the problems in the world and not impressed by the solution itself? If there's a solution, why you don't talk about the solution? You see, from me, that the Bible says the gospel of the kingdom does not start with the sin problem. The gospel of the kingdom starts with the original purpose of sonship, of bridehood, of, of familyhood. That's what it is all about. The problem of uh, the, the, the focus of the gospel of the kingdom is to bring back the original package that, you, that were designed for you. And Jesus didn't only pay for sin, he brought back the whole kingdom package. It's living in this fulfillment. We always say that sin is alternative fulfillment. Yes, it's alternative fulfillment because we need to live in fulfillment. But the problem is that the presence of God is the only place of fulfillment. And if you are not living in the presence of God, you will go and find, you will try to find fulfillment in things and sin and, and all this beauty in, in, in money and people and houses and cars. But it can never fulfill you. And there's nothing wrong with those things. It's your relationship with the thing that is wrong. Because you cannot find fulfillment in it. You can only find fulfillment in finding out who you are in the light of Jesus himself. That he came as the light of the world. John 1 verse 4 to 5. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness could not overtake it. You see, when you talk to an unbeliever, you don't start with sin, because that's not a problem. You start with God. You tell him, listen, do you, do you know that you were created by God? I haven't found people that said no. 99.9% .9 people believe that there is a God, and, 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 and they're created by God. And if they acknowledge it, they say, but tell me about your relationship with this God. And then they don't know what to talk about. They say, but you know, you're lost. You're lost because you do not have a relationship with God. You're not lost because you're living in sin. You're lost because you're not in the presence of the solution himself. The solution is not in you. And then we talk about the solution. And we talk about God's decision for him. And what he did for him. And what he did with him. And that he can make a decision. And that the Holy Spirit can live in him. And all these beautiful things. You see, I talked to a guy that was five years in China. He said to me, the biggest problem in China in evangelizing people is that there is no Chinese word for sin. He said, that's a huge problem. I said, that's not a problem. We don't start with sin. We start with lostness. We start with relationship. We start with God. We don't start with sin. I don't even need to talk once about sin to get people to God. Because it's not the sin of man that drives people unto God. It's the goodness of the Lord that, 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 that drives people unto Him. Romans 2 verse 4. 
it, it is the goodness of the Lord that, that, that draws the heart of man unto the heart of God into a relationship. The more you talk about the sin, you talk a person into the ground and you talk about something that's solved. And that's not the issue. Why do you want to talk about something that's solved? Start with where we are. We are at the point where man is still lost even though Jesus died. We are still lost because we are not in a relationship with God. Let's get back to this relationship. Let's get back what it is all, all about. Because we need to get back to the original, what it, what it is. The, the problem and the manifestations of all these problems, or the, all these manifestations, is actually mostly sin stuff, you know. But, but the presence or the existence of those things is because of the absence of light. It's because the, of the absence of the solution. It's the absence of God Himself. It's the absence of truth. And we just need to bring in the higher law of life, of truth, of light. And the darkness and the lie and the devil will flee. Uh, James 1 verse 4 verse 7 says to us, uh, Submit yourself unto God, meaning unto what He hath done and the truth about Him and you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You're not fighting anything in this world. You don't need to fight it. Because we don't fight. We only fight the revelation of the completed work of Jesus Christ. We just, we just indulge ourselves in it. Embrace it. Live it. Acknowledge it. Identify ourselves with it. Because He already identified us in the cross and the resurrection. Thank you very much.